Good morning, Good morning, church. everybody. <laughs> so good to have you with us. It is. Happy it's Sunday, May 30th. It is a great day today. It is, and even more great for Wiley because it was his birthday yesterday. Yes. Hey. Happy birthday. That's right. Thank you, LT. Um, One year 21 older. years again. That's right. 21, <laughs> I wish. Why don't you throw a happy birthday comment to Wiley in the thread right now. If you're on Facebook, you could go and give him a nice little well wish on his Facebook page. Yes. Um, I know people like your wife really do love to gather oh all gosh, of the things that have been said nicely about her on her birthday, yeah. doesn't she? Shrine, like right there <laughs> near the front door. Table. Bex All the shrine, cards, the cards, yeah. the flowers. It's yeah. like a florist there. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, I could make a business out of it. it really, truly yeah. is unbelievable. But I just, I mean, you know what I get? Socks. Yeah. And a kiss. And sleeping bags. <laughs> oh, Which actually leads segue. us to segue. our winter food That's appeal. It. I didn't get any non perishables for my birthday, yeah. but that's yeah. what we are giving to yeah. people all across the Hunter yeah. region and the Central Coast. We currently have six yeah. campuses here at Hope You See, soon to be seven, and all across the Hunter and the Coast. What we do yeah. is we bring in non-perishable items and we distri distribute them um, <laughs> out into people in need in the community yeah. across the Hunter yeah. and the Coast. It's yeah. pretty awesome. Great. Such a great um, way and an opportunity for us to be the hands and feet of Jesus in our local communities. Um, the other thing that we've been doing this month is we've been on our theme of legacy. Mm. Uh, for the month of May and June, our preaching series is going to be around legacy. I hope you've been enjoying the teaching on this and look forward to that teaching continue uh, next month. But hey, we are going to go to the Word in a moment. Before we do, it's time for communion. So why don't you, if you're at home right now, grab your communion emblems, have them ready. Really, this is such a holy moment for us as we gather around communion, gather around the body and the blood of Jesus. And so I'm going to hand over right now. Good morning, church. This morning, we're going to share around our communion table. And as we do that, I'm asking just for you to get something ready at home to have communion with us as a family. And while you do that, I'm going to read a scripture from you from um, a well-known scripture from 1 Corinthians 13. And I'm going to be looking from verse 12 and I'm reading from the message version of the Bible. And it says, we don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist, but it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines brightly. We'll see it all then, see it as clearly as God sees us, knowing Him directly just as He knows us. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us towards that consummation. Trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly, and love extravagantly. And the best of these three is love. What a beautiful, powerful scripture. Just three things to remember. And the first is to trust steadily, church. And I'm reminded of Proverbs 29, 25. It says, the fear of human opinions disables, but trusting in God protects us from that. And it's so beautiful. Just trust Him. Trust His word, church, steadily. And then hope unswervingly. And we as a church know that so well. In Hebrews 10, 23, we just reminded that we hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. He, because He who promises is able. And we are hope ambassadors, hope you see. And the third and most important of these is to love extravagantly. And in Ephesians 5, 2, again from the message, it says, Mostly, mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with Him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. What a powerful message of love. And our Father asks us to love like that. And he showed us, he showed us that extravagant love. He showed us that as we gather today and remember what His Son did for us on the cross as He gave His Son's life for us. We remember together that His body was broken and His body was broken so that we can live whole lives. We can have whole minds and whole hearts because of what happened to Him on that cross. And let us remember that now as we share in this communion. And not only do we remember that we can live whole lives, but we remember that His blood was shed for us 
whose blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins, that he washes us as white as snow and that nothing, nothing is too big or bad for, our forgive, for the forgiveness of our Father. Church, what a powerful, powerful statement of love. As we drink this juice together, let us remember that our sins are forgiven. We just bring them to God right now. We just thank you, Father. Let us just pray together. Heavenly Father, we just trust our lives to you. We thank you. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for wholeness and healing. Lord, I pray right now for every person that is watching, that is needing healing in their lives, Father God. Lord, we cry to you and we say thank you for the truth in your word. Thank you for what happened on that cross. Thank you that we can experience that in our lives, Father God. We're trusting in you no matter how that looks and how that healing is, Father God. We look to you and we hold unswervingly to that hope that you profess, Lord. And Father God, we just trust you right now with our lives and we just say thank you for that healing. Thank you for what you're doing. We just give everything to you, Lord, and just thank you that we are able to gather and share around this table today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And we just want to hear from you. You can just type in the comments. We want to hear your testimonies. We want to hear where you are. And if you need prayer, you can just share with us as well in this moment. So just thank you. Thank you for sharing with us today. Pray.
Great to be with you again, church, and so glad to have this opportunity to minister to you and continue in our legacy series. And I just love reading all of the letters that people are writing back and saying how much the program, the the worship and the teaching is helping them. Please uh, continue doing that. It really encourages us and encourages us as a church to to even do more and be better at, at what we're doing here today. Well, this message is titled Kingdom Calling. But in the last few weeks, we've been starting around this series saying, what's in your hands? And simply stated many things. I mean, the things that are in your hands, the assets that you have is your identity, for example, your your personality, your heritage, your gifts, your time, your character, of course, your finance and your calling, but most importantly, your relationships. And these are, I believe, the most significant resource and also the opportunity that we have, God-given opportunity, by the way, to steward those relationships. One, most importantly, with God himself. But of course, also with the people around us that he's placed in our world. And I believe that this also removes any excuses. Um, I know that's probably not a popular statement, but I believe this understanding about the resources that we have removes all excuses about not building legacy right now. And I suppose that's what I wanna lean into again today. You see, it's very clear from Jesus' teaching that we're all called to be stewards of all of those resources that I've just mentioned, especially our relationships. Oh, and by the way, um, we have the creator of heaven and earth as our ultimate resource. At Hope, you see, one of the powerful foundation scriptures is Isaiah 61. It says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. They will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They will revive them, though they've been deserted for many generations. Foreigners will be your servants. They'll feed your flocks and plow your fields and tend your vineyards. You will be called priests of the Lord, ministers of our God. You will feed on the treasure of the nations and boast in their riches. Instead of shame and dishonor, you will enjoy a double share of honor. You will possess a double portion of prosperity in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. What a powerful scripture, a prophetic word, the word that Jesus really ushered in his ministry when he went to that synagogue on that day. This scripture really is a picture, I believe, of what our lives should be like um, in terms of the kingdom of God. It's about what we should be looking like and how we should be activating ourselves in, in, in terms of pushing forward God's kingdom. I mean, Jesus' first message when he read that uh, Isaiah 61 scripture in the temple, he had just stepped out of a series of temptations in the wilderness. It really, when, when Jesus read, read this verse, it was basically a, dis, a declaration of God's story for humanity. And Jesus was now 
coming into the, the, the purpose of, of what God had, had for all of us. And Jesus was now going to reset planet Earth by this ministry. And he starts out by declaring this scripture, Isaiah 61. And in the scripture, it immediately includes all people. I love that. It wasn't just God on a mission to do his thing. He brings us into his mission. I mean, in Matthew's gospel, uh, accounts the same moment, the same transition from uh, Jesus' temptation in the wilderness into his ministry. From verse 17, it says this. And from then on, Jesus began to preach. He says, repent of all your sins and turn to God for the kingdom of heaven is near. This word kingdom that I want to emphasize and to um, spend time around today, in, in many different translations, it's not just talking about a, a definition of kingdom by territory, but it's really a definition of kingdom by dominion. Jesus said of the kingdom of God in Luke's gospel, chapter 17, the kingdom of God can't be able to say, here it is, or it's over there, for the kingdom of God is already among you. Perhaps the best way to understand the kingdom of God is defined as the, the rulership of God in the hearts of people. The rulership of God in the hearts of people. The good news is that we are all invited to become heralds of that King, Jesus Christ, and what he has brought with him. What did he bring? He brought, as Isaiah says in that prophetic word, he brought freedom, he brought favor, he brought honor, and he also brought prosperity, that scripture says. But see, let's be clear, being a kingdom person does not guarantee wealth regarding finances. I mean, the meaning of prosperity simply means that you're doing well. And I just think that's a great way to to express ourselves in life, that our goal should be that we're doing well. But because God's kingdom is the grand story, it's the story of all time, God's kingdom, um, and God places us in that story um, that we would find his eternal love, that we would become friends of God. And ultimately, because of that relationship with him, then we would find ultimate meaning, purpose, freedom, and true lasting peace. What a great part, part, what a great opportunity to be in the narrative of the kingdom of God story. Then along the way, we also discover if we're in that journey of being inside God's kingdom, that we understand that we're also weaved together with our brothers and sisters in this story which they also are playing a part in the kingdom of God's story. See, every believer in Jesus, it, it, I believe that we're, that we're meant to leave our mark and to start a legacy for the king, and not only for the king, but for his kingdom. Have you ever heard this saying before? I mean, I know it's been tossed around for a long time, but no man is an island. I mean, it actually comes from a 400-year-old poem written by John Doe. His thought is that people don't thrive in isolation and that we all play a bigger part of our story that is bigger than ourselves. John Doe simply just borrowed, actually, a kingdom principle and happened to write a poem about it. See, nature itself is everyday picture of how things are, that are connected can prosper. I mean, if you pull a tree or a plant out of the ground, if it loses its connection with the soil, it cannot prosper. It's the same for us as well. Pull us out of community, pull us out of local churches. There's no way then that we can prosper. We'll fumble around and try and look for nutrients in all sorts of ways, but it's only when things are planted that they can actually reach their full potential. So what has all this got to do with legacy? Well, I believe legacy is the understanding that we are connected to our past, 
that I believe that that we understand that we have then re- responsibilities to steward the present, which means that we've got to be connected to our present. We've got to be connected to our past. And legacy also understands that we must also build and be connected to our future. We can't live this life by disowning or building walls to our past. They are what they are. We can't change the past. And we've also got to have a, a handle on actually making sure that we set up the future for our biological sons and daughters, for our spiritual sons and daughters, and for the community that we live in. We've got to have an idea in terms of this phrase, an agricultural term now that's becoming very popular and a a whole way of thinking. We've got to be regenerative about how we live. We've got to leave things better than how we found them. See, we do this, I believe, by honouring those who have gone before us. So, I mean, let's continue to shine a light on those that have toiled in the past for what we enjoy today. See, I believe there's something very spiritual and very sacred when you honour the past. I mean, the the ode that is recited every year when we honour those soldiers that have given their lives in battles for what we enjoy in this country. I just want to reread those words to you to remind you how powerful it is to honor the past. The ode goes like this. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. In Deuteronomy, chapter 32, there's a scripture there that says this, remember the days of long ago. Think about the generations past. Ask your fathers and he will inform you. Inquire of your elders and they will tell you. The psalmist in Psalm 145 writes this, he says, let every generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. So even in this moment right now, as you're watching this teaching, I want to honor and remind you that the reason we are here today is that an amazing family led by John and Joan Pennycook over 30 years ago set out and started this church, building a kingdom church with a, le- with a legacy mindset, making disciples, coaching people into leadership and preaching the good news of Jesus. We cannot and should not rewrite history. I say well done to John and Joan. Thank you for playing your part in this kingdom legacy of hope you see. And now it's our turn. See, legacy understands that we are responsible for how we steward the present. Simply by engaging with 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 the moments See, your your moment in the present, are are you disconnecting from the moment? Are you waiting for a better day to turn up? Are you living in the old ways rather than actually living in the present? I, I just want to say to you, simply, it's your turn. It's my turn now to build the Legacy Kingdom story of today. And I believe this involves all of our lives, relationally, physically, financially, spiritually. And from our position within the kingdom, this is that Jesus was proclaiming again in that, that beautiful verse in Isaiah 61. We can understand and and apply um, faith in a way to actually advance the kingdom. Now, Now I've got a couple points. And my first point is the kingdom is advanced or even hindered by the condition of our relationships with God or our neighbors especially by the way we engage in the broader community. Peter writes in 1 Peter chapter 2, he says, Respect everyone and love your Christian brothers and sisters. Fear God and also respect the King. How do we live in this present? I believe the kingdom of God should be our first priority. 
where we invest our time and energy. I mean, the kingdom just shouldn't get our leftovers. It should actually get our best. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. How are we to live again in this kingdom presence? Why? Just this understanding that we are stewards of the financial resources. There's no such thing as a self-made man or a self-made woman. That many people have participated in that. I mean, the Bible talks about actually God gave you the ideas even to make that resource and he's gifted that into your life. Now, what are you going to do by that? And I believe that resource should be ordered by kingdom priorities. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 19, it says, And it was a good thing to receive wealth from God and, the, and good health to also enjoy it to enjoy your work and accept your lot in life, this is indeed a gift from God. I don't believe that God wants us to be poor and, and, and without, but again, what are we going to do with the gifts that we currently have in our hands? How are we utilizing those resources today? That's a much more important question than how much. And I believe, how do we live in the legacy present we have to live as a, 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 as a spirit first people with every aspect of our lives as a testimony to the, to the kingdom, a testimony to the king and his kingdom in Colossians 4 verse 6. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you'll have the right response for everyone. I mean, that takes time and meditation. It, it takes a, um, a time where you would sit down and think about how is the other person going to receive this conversation. I like the idea that we have attractive conversations. The kingdom of God is still to come in its ultimate fulfillment. And Jesus asks us to pray in that model prayer um, about the kingdom. He, he, he says, I pray that the kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. But also at the same time, that's real. In another sense, the kingdom is here now and is expanding and growing. And some of that is actually our responsibility. We can't serve the kingdom without allowing the rulership of the king in our hearts, though. And the Bible says clearly that today is the day of salvation. So an important thought for all of us, I believe, is what will the next generation say about your kingdom legacy? How will they refer to you? Will they use words like, well done? Or will they use words like, missing in action? Will they use words like, that those people laid down their life for the kingdom? Or in encouraging things that I hope people say to, to all of us somehow or other, they were faithful to the very end. See, I believe legacy is about the past. Legacy is also about the future. But most importantly, legacy is about today. Let's all play our part building God's kingdom. Let me pray for you today. Father, I pray that these beautiful people that are watching this program, no matter where they are in a lounge room or in the car or on their phone or however they're consuming your word, I pray that Holy Spirit, you'll speak to them strongly about, about honouring the parts that need to be honoured from their past, that legacy story. Lord, as they start to dream again about the future, that they'll be thinking about kingdom ideas, about how they can go forward. And Father, I pray that again, that this day, that this week will be a day of action, a day of commitment, a day of surrender to your will in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
darkness you have broken every curse giver of mercy you're my help in time of need oh I can't help but sing faithful you are faithful forever you will be faithful you 
fantastic time to have gathered around the Word and worship this morning. If you've been joining us online for the last few weeks now, and um, you know, every time you come back, something in your spirit is just being stirred up to respond to the gospel. You know, we talk about the gospel being the good news that Jesus saves. You and I no longer need to be attached to the guilt and the shame of our past. He has separated us from that and offers us freedom and new life in Him. Yeah. Now, if you've been joining us and something in you has just been, you know, you've been leaning into it, you want to know more. We say this every week and we want to encourage you every week. Why not reach out to one of the people on our Hope You See online team? and ask them the questions that you have. You know, what does this mean? What does this look like? How do I become a Christian? How do I follow Jesus? Those questions and anything that's on your mind, our team are ready to chat with you, interact with you, answer it, help you along that journey as you become a Christ follower. And so you can click the link in the chat room below. If you're on our Facebook or YouTube platforms, you could also head over to hopeyc.tv and that's where our online campus team are today and they would it would be their highest honor to chat with you and lead you in that journey. Now, this morning you might be feeling something stir within you and you're not ready to respond yet. That's okay because guess what? Every week we give people an, a chance to respond to the gospel here online and so you could do it in any of the coming weeks. Um, we're happy with you just being at the journey and the pace that you're at, but we want to engage with you at some point. So when you've got the Courage, click the link and our team are ready to go. Um, great decision this morning for those of you who are choosing to follow Jesus, hey? That's right. And God set, well, he set the, the, the bar really in regards to giving by giving Jesus. Yeah. And, and we're going to give now. We do yeah. that financially here at Hope You See. Uh, again, thank you for being such a generous church. Yeah. You can give yeah. online today by clicking the link right there in the chat. Alternatively, you can give via the Hope You See app or at our website, hopeyouc.com, yeah. which is awesome. It is. Hey, before we go, we have been, um, over the last few weeks in church, been talking about something coming up very soon that is very dear and exciting for us. Hope You See Gathering is happening here in Australia on the 26th to the 28th of August. Wow. And the 30th of May is actually the end of the early bird pricing. Oh, yeah. So if you go to hopeyoucgathering.com, uh, or you can see the link just below us right now, you can register today at the very special early bird price. As of tomorrow, price goes up. Um, it's gonna be incredible three days together. I better get on that. You I'll better just, get on that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I just wanna watch this back and see my face. I'm like, oh, really? Wiley better register. Mm -hmm. um, or if Beck's watching online this morning, you better register for Wiley. That's right, stop looking uh, at that birthday shrine yeah. and register, please. Uh, but look, hey, Hope You See Gathering is gonna be incredible three days together. And yeah. I'm here to tell you, we will be having an online um, yes. version of the conference. So if you are joining us from overseas and you want to join us online, you will join us right here at hopeyoucsee.tv. Come on. Fantastic. Will we be talking to our online family? We will be doing you something. Oh, cool. You know it. We'll That's be here. Right. We'll be hosting you, loving on you guys. Um, I know last year's gathering, you and Beck hosted the first oh, night. Oh, we did do that. So, you know. It's got to be a bit of LT and Wiley though. I mean, yeah. You know. well, we might bring our wives on and have some fun. Oh, that could be good. It'd be cool. They'll both be looking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pregnant, oh, by the way, if this is the first time you're tuning in, oh, yeah. we're saying that because both of our wives are pregnant. Yeah, and so, pretty much at the same time. Yeah, because I good. could see how that would look. You know. <laughs> anyway, we should probably... Hey, we should do the blessing. blessing. <laughs> Send you out blessed. Thanks for joining us um, today. We so love having you online. We'll be back next week, 8.30 and 10.30, Australian Standard Eastern Time. It's going to be awesome. Say this out loud with us at home. I pray, I pray that God, God, who is the source of hope, will fill us completely with joy and peace because we place our trust in Him. Then we will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You are blessed, church. We'll see you next week.